Hi, I am R. Brady Frost, and this is another Free Talk Tuesday, where I talk about a couple of different topics and just have a free conversation with you. Now, today's a little different because today is actually Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I'm late on the video. I'm really sorry. Uh, but we are trying something new. Instead of recording on my normal setup, we are actually recording on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, I've got it on my tripod. I've got the mic set up on there. I'm not sure exactly how well it's doing, but we're just going to give this one a shot. And this is significant because it's the second time that I've tried to do this setup. It hasn't really worked in the past because, well, let me show you. So this is this is the camera. I saved up my money um, and bought this to like encourage me to work on my YouTube channel. And nobody needs to do that. It's just for me. I feel like this is a sense of obligation to myself. Uh, and as you can see, possibly, I've got this little smiley face drawn here because I got to remind myself. It's really hard to look into the the lens. Uh, but I can look at this little guy, and as long as I remember that this little guy is smiling at me and telling me, hey, good job, um, then, you know, it, it makes it a little easier, and it, it kind of makes it fun to do the videos. Now, I haven't gotten the camera fully figured out yet, but its current settings, it only records for 30 minutes. That's why the format of these videos is typically around 30 minutes. Uh, but I am trying to set this up because I was going to do a stream not a stream, sorry, a uh, writing sprint. And maybe someday I have, like I have this camera, but I need to get it set up over here somehow, and it's set up over here, and you don't want to see the bad side of the room. It's my bookshelf, but it's got a lot of memorabilia. Uh, for here, uh, you you chat with this little with the little dude for a second. Hold on, I'll show you what, what kind of stuff is on here. Uh, all right, I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still here, guys still here don't don't run away okay 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 here we go um so i've got stuff like my is it mr it's not mr pickle it's captain super pickle it's super pickle yes i don't know why i forgot that it's totally totally lost it uh but i've got super pickle i had one of these guys when i was um really young in the early to mid 80s I uh, really love this guy, and well, not this guy in particular, but Super Pickle. Um, I let my wife know that that was one of the things that I, I really missed is that I lost my Super Pickle. Actually, the last time I remember, he was in the camper trailer, and I'm pretty sure my parents threw it away because I left it out in the camper trailer. You know, because the 80s were the wild, wild west of, you know, you leave your stuff out, your parents got rid of it. Um, <laughs> some parents do that. Uh, we don't, we, everything for our kids is like consensual. Hey, you have too many toys. You're not cleaning your room. Pick some volunteers to go to, you know, the thrift store for other kids or donations or whatever. Anyway, so he's one of the little guys that I got uh, over there that you don't, it's not fancy. I just, my mom would say it was clever. <laughs> And that's okay. That's okay. That's, sometimes that's the way my brain works. Um, but I also have, you know, stuff that I'm really proud of. Uh, I have, you know, my second chance. This is my first book. If you haven't read it, it's the story of Denton Wade. He dies and he is uploaded into a digital afterlife, a video game for dead people where there's experience points and levels and monsters and quests and loot and all that good stuff except he never really wanted to be there in the first place and he he goes through the tutorial and he has to make a choice and he decides you know i'm here my family thinks that i'm going to be in this afterlife they want me to be there they want to join me later um, it's not really what i believed in but i'm going to go for it and so he goes into end world everlasting and has all sorts of crazy adventures. It's a really fun read. It's dark fantasy. It does deal with, you know, death and, and you know, confronting, you know, our beliefs versus what technology promises. And I think it's just really relevant for today. I released it in 2019, but it's, especially as we've seen AI grow um, and technology grow, 
I think it's very relevant today just to, to think about the promises of technology. And, and for Denton, it's, you know, do I exist or am I now a program who is, it's designed to think that I am me, right? So there are some deep questions, but, you know, overall, it's about his adventures in and World Everlasting, meeting people, people he can trust, people he can't trust, um, all sorts of different things. It's it's just a really great read, guys. Uh, please give it a shot if you like lit RPG, game lit, or if you like gaming in general, and also you know want to do some reading. I the next thing I have is the Broken Blade. This is the sequel to Second Chance, and it picks up you know about two weeks after after book one finishes. Uh, a little bit darker of a book, but the stakes seem to be. Higher. I don't want to give anything away with book one, um, but if you liked book one, definitely The Broken Blade. Um, and this is, I'm sorry, camera dude, uh, over here. This is the cover. Uh, I mentioned this in some of my other videos. This is the cover for Seeking Truth, which is book three. It is still underway. If you have read book one and book two, and you would like to read uh, the draft of the first seven chapters of Seeking Truth, which there there may be some changes coming, so like it's a good way to get a version of it. Um, you can check it out on my Ream page. It's just reamstories.com, R-E-A-M stories.com slash R Brady Frost. And just follow me, guys. Don't sign up for any of the paid tiers. I'm not at the level where I'm producing enough uh, to make that worth you joining and paying, you know, like a Patreon type of model. Uh, maybe someday. I, I would like to get there. I would like to write full time. But I'm just not there yet. So uh, with that in mind, I do want to talk about my writing. Um, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I almost forgot. There is also this, and I don't know what happened here. Oh, whoops. Okay, I think I think uh, I got a low battery on this. All right, there's also this on my shelves. This is the weakest frost mage. This is probably one of the most the proudest things I've done outside of you know <laughs> raising my kids. Um, and loving my kids and being a part of their lives. But this is a book that I co-wrote with my son, Griffin. He actually wrote the story. I helped him do the editing and polishing. Um, but it's very much his story. And it's the story of Zach, Zachary Smith. Uh, he starts out playing a powerful barbarian in the world of Kingdoms Unbound. It's a totally unrelated uh, video game. But just as with Denton Wade, he unfortunately dies, and is uploaded into End World Everlasting. This this book is amazing, guys. If you, if you read my books and you thought they were good, this one's better. I promise. Because uh, I took everything that I've learned in my process, and I've, I've helped Griffin with his story, um, helped him tighten it up. It took years to write that book. I'm very proud of all the work he put into it. I'm very proud of the story that he created. We were able to polish it up and make it really, really nice. And um, I'm not trying to take any real credit with that. Griffin is amazing. So uh, please definitely check that out. Uh, the Weakest Frost Mage is available on Amazon. Uh, paperback, hardcover, ebook. It's in Kindle Unlimited, so add it to your Kindle Unlimited to be read pile. Um, it's also going on sale uh, later on this month, and I'll have to do a video for that specifically. Uh, both the Weakest Frost Mage and Second Chance ebooks will be up for 99 cents between November 25th and December 2nd. Okay, so I guess I tied in this whole mess of a bookshelf, gave you a little bit of childhood memorabilia, and talked about my books. Hey, that's awesome. So let's talk while we're still talking about writing. Um, and I, I do have to get into my writing sprint because I haven't gotten any words yet today. But I'm going to take a look at this over here. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I am continuing to track 
on my productivity uh, word count tracker. Uh, I have written every day in September. I wrote every day in October, and so far, except for today, which I will do, I'm setting up to do, um, every day in November. So my totals for September were 8,542 words. For October, it was 9,073 words. And so far, in November, I have 1,948 words. So my goal is to try to increase my word count every month. And for those of you who are writers, obviously, those are small word counts. I, I work a full-time job. I have a family. Uh, the last few years have been really rough. And this is me trying to claw my way back to my dream. And some days, my lowest word count day was on Wednesday. Um, the first Wednesday in September, it was 44. No, no, I actually have 43 words. That was my lowest. But the average is usually around 200 or so. I have days where I write 500 words. I have, yesterday I wrote 562. You know, some days are easier than others, but I'm writing every single day. And having that habit is, and rebuilding that habit is the first, it's kind of like the path that I'm laying down to be able to get back to where I was before. And, you know, it's okay to struggle. And if you're struggling with your art and or whatever it is, your passion, and you, some days you just don't feel like, you know, between work and whatever else is going on in your life, you don't have it in you, you know, just give it your best. Show up to the extent you can and keep pursuing it, you know. Um, but my word count month over month is it's getting better, I think. Doing pretty all right. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to keep working on it, and we're going to get there. And this book is going to become a reality. Hopefully, fairly soon. <laughs> Not fairly, fairly soon, but as soon as I can. You know, I still want to be kind to myself in that journey. So, for those of you who are waiting for book three, I really appreciate you. Um, I appreciate your patience and understanding. I, I'm there. You know, I look at this pretty much almost every day, and not a day goes by that I don't think about book three. So. I will get it done, and it will be an amazing book. And this is a promise that I'm not only making to you, but I'm also making it to myself. It's very important to me. All right, so we've talked about writing. We've talked about gear and setup and whatever. Uh, let's move on to the next topic. What am I reading this weekend? What are you reading this weekend? Hmm. Well, I don't know if any of you have heard of the series Dungeon Crawler Carl. <laughs> but I am digging that series. I really like it. And uh, I've met Matt Miniman, uh, the author. He is an amazing guy, uh, super kind, and uh, just just an all-around respectable dude. Um, really like him as both a, a person and as an author. And I'm really excited that I'm, I'm going to be reading um, or starting the seventh book in the series, it's called This Inevitable Ruin. Right now, you can get it in paperback format. I believe it's 280,000 words long. It's going to be a hefty read, but I've been really looking forward to it. Um, so I'm going to get it this weekend. It's super popular now, and I I just I don't want to run into any spoilers. So I'm going to be very careful uh, about how I interact in different communities because I don't want this book spoiled. I have things that I figured out earlier on in the, the series that I've been tracking and watching develop. And I think a lot of that's going to kind of come to a head here in the seventh book. And I'm really excited to see how it plays out. So, um, yeah, I'll be reading the I'll be reading the ebook. No, 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 sorry, the paperback. I read the ebook of book six, and then I listened to the audiobook afterwards. And I'll be reading the paperback of book seven, and then I will also listen to the audiobook later. And uh, I, I just, I think Soundbooth does an amazing job, but obviously 
you know, Matt writes an amazing story. So super, super excited about it. Uh, yeah. So that's what I'll be reading this weekend. I get it on Saturday. Uh, I can't wait. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, speaking of what I'm going to be doing this weekend, I'm also going to be doing writing. And the whole point of setting up the camera and everything and not recording on the camera right now is that I'll be doing a writing sprint. Hopefully I get that uploaded uh, to the channel. And if you just want to watch and see what it looks like when I write, Apparently, I've learned, I pinch my lip a lot when I write, <laughs> uh, but it's also kind of fun just to see like how a scene is built, and I think if you squint, you can actually read what I'm writing, um, but if you're a writer and you want to do a writing sprint, but you don't want to do it alone, come join me. You know, it, you're more than welcome to. That's kind of why I put the videos there. But, you know, obviously, if, if fans want to see what the process looks like when I write, then, you know, it, it's there for you, too. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, that takes care of writing sprints. Oh, yeah. So this week has been kind of tough. I'm not going to lie. It's been tough. Uh, the furnace is having problems. Uh, luckily, whatever the problem is we're able to keep the house at about 65 it'll power cycle on and off and i don't know enough about hvac to get in there and start trying to clean like the flame sensor or anything like that I, the furnace is expensive and i can't afford to break it unfortunately this is the time of year where everybody is now after a warm october and now getting into a cold november everybody's turning on their furnaces and a lot of people are finding that theirs is not running the way that they would like it to. So all the HVAC technicians are like booked out solid. So I don't know. We've got space heaters. We're going to do the best that we can. We're going to make sure we keep the kids warm, bundle up in blankets. And, you know, so far we've been able to maintain about 65 degrees. It did get colder today because I like they're installing fiber optic in our neighborhood which is huge we've been here about five years no almost six years almost six years and i've been like i wonder when they're gonna put fiber in well now now is the answer they're putting in fiber now but i think they hit a power line or a power box or something today so the power was out for a couple of hours and even though we were able to maintain about 65 with it cycling on and off with no power, you know, we started dropping and it got pretty cold and that wasn't, it was not fun. And you can't run, well, you can run the, uh, we have a gas fireplace, but the blower doesn't work because we don't have electricity for it. So, cheers to electricity and modern living. May we return to it soon. Mm. What am I drinking tonight? Um, golden monkey tea. Something that I discovered, oh gosh, about mm, a little less than 10 years ago. And it's been years and years since I've had some. And I just thought about it randomly and decided to get myself another package of loose leaf golden monkey tea. And it is pretty good. My other go-to is that Sang Souchong, a uh, very smoky tea. If you like that, it's like sitting around a campfire. My wife does not like it. So it's definitely, like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, then you really don't. Um, but it's something, I'm not a tea snob, but something that I enjoy. All right. Well, I guess this is kind of a shorter video today. I've done a couple of different takes. I, I've been trying to do no takes and just speaking and trying to get used to the camera. But obviously with the switch up of the equipment and going to my phone it's been a little different so it's it's kind of thrown me off but we're learning and that's that's the biggest thing right uh, growth on the channel we actually gained a couple subscribers and lost one it might have been the person who subscribed I've been uploading a few more shorts sorry I've been uploading some shorts to to the channel and uh, it seems like that's where I've been getting subscribers, so that might be something that I need to do a little bit more. Uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about uh, is content that I'm creating for 
my channel. And as an author, you know, I've been trying to look, and I think I mentioned this before. We'll go through this and then I'll wrap up the video, but a lot of the videos that I'm looking at of how to grow your YouTube channel, they're channels that decent people, but all their content is how how to grow your YouTube channel, especially like over 40. Well, I'm over 40. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel, but I can't create content the same way that these other channels are creating content because they're creating content around building a YouTube channel. So their audience is me, but I'm not my own audience for what they're telling, like what they're demonstrating that I do, right? They're telling me I could do something different and get the same results, but my audience is obviously different because they're not looking on how to grow a YouTube channel. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to, you know, talk dismissive, dismissively about these people and the value they bring. It's just that's not what this channel is. So I've been doing some thinking about what kind of content I can create. And, you know, that's going to be a rough journey because nobody is really watching me. And I know that. And I keep producing them because the object of this video is not necessarily to get more YouTube subscribers, which would be really great. It's for me to become a better YouTuber, if that makes sense. And I recognize that I used to make videos differently. You know, the videos that I took down, I look at them and I say, gosh, I wish I, I would have stuck with it because I had a lot more energy and a lot more confidence. Uh, to try risky things and to, excuse me, be a little more weird, um, and I don't know, just like have fun with it, right? And now I, it's like I, I have to grow my YouTube channel because I, I need to finally accomplish this goal that I had that I set aside, you know, and kind of forgot about. And now that I'm getting older. I, I want to do these things like I'm I'm watching time pass and you realize man you don't have as much as you thought you did or you know being distracted becomes more of a liability than just something you get to do you get distracted and you don't do the things you want to do you don't do the things that you want to do you never get done so yeah but I think I need to take a lesson from some of the videos that I was creating before Consider my audience, because as an, as an author, who wants, who wants to have me talk about this all day? Hey, buy my book. Hey, you know, do this. Not, not very many people, right? And I could talk about my writing process. But unfortunately, like the searchability is if I'm answering other writers' questions about writing. I don't really have a problem with that. But is is the question I guess becomes, is that the kind of channel that I want to have? Am I trying to set myself up as this writing expert? And you know, I told you my word counts. I'm I'm writing every day, but I'm not I'm not pumping those words out. I've got a full-time job, and I, I would love to write full-time, and this is my dream, but I'm, I'm not there yet. And this isn't like imposter syndrome, necessarily. I, I do know that I have a lot of knowledge, a lot of hard-earned knowledge that I could share, but I'm trying to write. I'm trying to write every day, you know? And so I guess that's where it gets tough, is like, what kind of content am I going to be creating? And you know, if you look at the banner at the top of my YouTube channel, um, the artwork, you know, it's it's like author, voiceover, creative, you know. And I guess that's it. Like, do I, I guess I need to be writing some short stories here and there and then trying to narrate them and doing that. But it's hard, like, getting to that space when I'm, you know, I, I need to write this book. And I don't have the answer, and it's something that I'm going to have to, I guess, kind of work on and try to figure out. And 
there are no easy answers to it. Nobody's going to come and tell me what kind of YouTube channel I need to, to create. And I need, I guess I need to be intentional as I go forward in creating the content that will attract the people that are going to have the most interest in me as a content creator, right? And I don't know, like, creating how-to writing videos really niches you into the education space. And I'm really, really excited about the stories that I've written, and I, I want to write more stories. And I, if I'm being honest, you know, I would love to have the time and the space in my life to narrate stories and act them out and do different voices and really bring characters to life in the way that I've seen others do. And I've really enjoyed, you know, and I, I've always been kind of a silly guy, <laughs> especially when I was younger, uh, always doing voices and just being goofy. And it's like, I want to honor that part of who I've always been, if that makes sense. And um, I guess it's just trying to work my way there. And the hard thing is, is that this isn't, this isn't fast. And it's not easy. And, you know, some days I really struggle. I'm a disabled veteran. Um, I get migraines a lot. I have PTSD. And sometimes it takes, like, everything that I have just to go to work and be productive in my professional life. And I'm not, you know, it's hard for me to admit this. But as long as I, like I'm, I, it feels like I'm stuck between two worlds, if that makes sense. That I want to leave the professional life behind because it's so taxing. And I want to have the dream, but I can't have the dream until I build it, right? And to do that, you have to put in the work. And you have to, you know, do sp spreadsheets <laughs> to to track your word count and you have to show up every day and you have to do it when you don't think you have anything left in you and that's where I'm at right now is you know trying to do all these things and we'll get there like I promise we'll get there but it's gonna take a little while and that's okay it's just I need to start being intentional about, you know, like what kind of videos I want to make and, you know, what what kind of channel I want this to be. And every, all the advice is if you want to get subscribers, you have to answer questions. And that, that totally makes sense. But there's got to be a way that I can... Sorry, I got another low battery feeling. There's got to be another way that I can um, I can grow the channel and, and not just be shoehorned into creating content for other authors. Look, if I can help people, I really want to. I want I I, I want to help make people who want to create. I want I want to help make their journey easy because um, I've definitely struggled, and having camaraderie and fellowship is important, but. I also want people to enjoy my writing and enjoy the stories that I write. And so, yeah. Anyway, that's just kind of the growing pains of a YouTube channel in a nutshell. And if you've stuck with me this long, you know, I know not very many people are watching these videos right now, but I'm leaving them up. So who knows? Maybe later somebody's going to want to, you know, go back and watch these. If you're with me this far into the video, thank you so much. Thank you for being with me. Super Pickle, thanks you for being here for this long. Please take care of yourself and the people you care about and never stop chasing your dreams.